as we've seen over the last well, over the last day or so, we've seen increasing political tension, and it has led to that what's clearly an invasion of Ukraine from Russia. Now, this is a major reason for concern in our industry, right? I know part of Four Corners Helium's goal is to avoid importing helium from volatile sources, as you said in your speech. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, let's see if I can try to elaborate, elaborate on that. What you're concerned about is supply issues coming domestically and, and globally as well. Um, well, I would say some of this ties into some of the excellent uh, points that Phil made earlier. Uh, it concerns me on the geological and um, you can say geo geochemical, geophysical side is so many of the easiest fields have been discovered uh, and that parlays into the challenges of finding the new supply. Uh, there's been a lot of wells that have been drilled in, in a lot of basins and because we look at all of the uh, companies are out there and there's 17 going to 18 publicly traded companies that have yet to put any there. I think Phil and I talked about this a few days ago and maybe maybe he mentioned it that they might have zero healing production going forth. The other one is Labarge field and everybody would like to think, oh, well, if we have an issue, uh, the BLM is struggling. Uh, we know it's in its maintenance issues and and uh, even when it comes back on. It's, it's declining like that. Um, heck, why can't Exxon just trip the switch and, uh, and produce more helium from Labarge? But uh, helium is like a super tanker trying to turn in an ocean. It's not gonna. It's got wells right now that are flowing 75 million cubic feet a day, you know, of a combination of methane, CO2, and helium. And um, the, it's for them to start drilling wells you know, the size of them, it's just not going to happen overnight. Um, so we're going to see these local shortages uh, because it all goes comes down to location, location, location. And it comes down to having the right kind of scientists. Um, I think there's some really good people out there. They're trying really hard. But because it's such an exploration challenge, um, it, it just comes down to of rolling up our sleeves and getting the right kind of science. You know, what we're hoping to develop better is the ability to use seismic to help detect where the better porosity zones are not to get too much in the weeds here but one of our main partners is a group in houston called esice roger young is one of the most brilliant scientists i've ever met but he ties rock mechanics to geophysical seismic responses and has attributes that help help us determine the best porosity perm so when you when you're looking for helium, some of the rocks with the best porosity and best permeabilities with these huge flow rates might have the lower helium percentages. When you get into tighter rock, which is more northwest New Mexico, you can have five to seven percent helium in northwest New Mexico, but the the rock is pretty tight, and uh, they're finding that they're fracking some of the zones there. And I, I'm an advocate. We won't go in the fracking world, but um, but fracking may be involved in some of the reservoirs that are just tight. And it's just common sense, you know? Helium, oh, here's my balloon. <laughs> so uh, helium is going to be more established in the tighter rock. So if you, the Goldilocks zone is when the seismic attribute can find the adequate porosity aligned with the adequate helium percentage and the economics really work. If the rumors are that uh, Russia can bring helium to our shores at $160 per MCF, and we're getting anywhere from 300 to 500 per MCF now, it depends on where you're at, uh, that's very bullish. So uh, our goal is you know, to make money now at 250 to 500 MCF per day uh, per MCF, uh, and then eventually get down to where we can make money at helium at 100 to 150 dollars per MCF, so we can keep the outsources uh, away from us in countries that we don't want to deal with. 